It's time to hear what you think of the BBC World Service in Over to You. This week, the BBC World Service has been given continued additional funding of £94 million from the UK government. We ask how it might be spent and will it affect the BBC's independence from government interference? Plus, when Catty met Carlos is taking a summer break, but we hear your thoughts on the series so far. I'm Rajan Datta and this is Over to You. To start, and that extra cash. Alongside the money the World Service already gets from the domestic licence fee. To find out more about what it means to you, the listener, earlier today I headed to the newsroom in New Broadcasting House to meet the controller of BBC News Output and Commissioning, Jamie Angus. Um, welcome, Jamie. Did you ask for the extra money? Well, we're constantly in discussions with the government about their part of the World Service budget. Remember that the World Service is paid for in large part by the UK licence fee, which spends at least £254 million a year on the World Service. And, you know, we put forward a, a positive case showing that with additional investment, we could very much benefit the UK licence fee payers and the UK taxpayers, but also our global audiences by countering the kind of dangerous disinformation, particularly around health issues to do with COVID, but also in other areas. So, for example, we want to expand the original investigative journalism that we do looking at India, South Asia, Southeast Asia. And when we made that case to the government, they were receptive and have given us some additional funding in order to do that. So that's very good news for our audiences, both in English and in our 42 language services. Well, let's talk about our audiences and listeners. What does it actually mean? I mean, they're very interested in process. So they're kind of like, you know, these big figures, they, they want to know where the money is actually going. Well, look, it's going to employ journalists. So it'll be used for two main reasons. Firstly, is to employ additional journalists doing important and original journalism. But also, secondly, we want to invest in the digital impact of our journalism, which is another area where this new money will go. And that is in order to make the best of the journalism that we already do available to more audiences on digital platforms. So real people doing real jobs as opposed to it just kind of going somewhere into the ether and, and hiring consultants or whatever? Yeah, no, absolutely. But it's important with the digital investment that actually in the modern global media environment, your digital product is your content. You know, it's quite difficult to maintain a distinction between those two things. We were investing in original journalism, but if nobody consumes it on digital platforms, we haven't done our job properly. There will always be this suspicion that money from any government directly to a national broadcaster will have a political agenda. How do you answer that? Well, it's certainly the argument that, you know, the Russian and Chinese and Iranian governments like to make about the World Service. And it, it's entirely baseless, of course, because... The World Service for many years was funded wholly by the UK government, actually, and only recently in the majority by the BBC licence fee payer. But however the World Service has been paid for over the years, it's always had guaranteed editorial independence, and that's enshrined not only in the BBC charter and the kind of agreement about how the World Service operates, but it, you can see it in the way that we work. We're an organisation that responds openly to complaints. We correct ourselves when we get on the rare occasions that we get things wrong. You and I have just discussed this before and it's quite plainly an organization that editorially is not pulling any punches either in its coverage of global issues or indeed its coverage of the UK and how the BBC holds the UK government to account. But if the Foreign and Commonwealth Office say that they want this money to go to stopping disinformation and going to specific language services, isn't that them ex exercising control, pulling strings? Well, the BBC agrees with the government which languages we operate in because that is covered by the BBC's charter obligations. But of course, the government have no input into the editorial content of what our journalists cover. That's a decision entirely for us. And I can reassure people, and I've worked in the BBC for well over 20 years now, and I've never, ever encountered any attempt to influence our editorial agenda improperly by people in the government here. But just lastly on this, so but are you accountable for the money that you spend, this money, for instance, that's been given to you, are you accountable for how it's spent? Do you have to go to them at a committee or whatever and say, this is what we're doing? Yeah, not editorially, crucially. So we certainly um, tell the Foreign Office what we're spending the money on, but we don't ask their permission to do so. We are trusted international broadcasters and the government makes this grant to the World Service to carry out a broad range of objectives, but at no level does it transgress into editorial interference in what we do. Jamie Angus, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Next, 
and news about this programme. Hello, I'm Catty Kay in Washington. And I'm Carlos Watson in California. Welcome to When Catty Met Carlos. The latest edition had an announcement to make. Carlos, we have a little bit of a bittersweet moment. It's the last in the series and we will be back at the end of the summer, but for the moment, we are taking a pause. Indeed we do. I, I still remember us. So we asked you to give us your thoughts on the series so far. Hello over to you. This is Amina Adamu from Inverness in Scotland. I feel that I like the programme because of the interesting dynamics between the two presenters. They take a particular topic and look at it in depth, thereby giving you a very good insight. I'm really looking forward to another season of the programme. Since the presidency of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, it's become a tradition of American politics to assess the performance of a new president after their first 100 days in office. During a similar Hello over to you. This is Steve Mirzievsky and I'm an American living in Poland. You can be guaranteed that the topic of the conversation will revolve around three entrenched positions. One, the world is a wonderful place now that Joe Biden is president. Two, Donald Trump is the source of all evil. And three, racism is everywhere if you just look close enough. In short, I've heard it all before. If you've listened to one of these programs, you've listened to them all. I'm sure that the producers will argue that they give a balanced perspective. But trust me, they do not. And, you know, what an interesting time and window that we're mm -hmm. in and all the various conversations, including about life and death. Or Hi, over to you. This is Maura from Okinawa, Japan. As an Irish immigrant to the U.S. who has spent the past two decades living in the Bay Area, I've thought a lot about how the cultural and political systems work in the U.S. This show helps me gain a better understanding of what it means to be an American by bringing diverse and international perspectives. This show is truly one of a kind that provides a forum for honest, open and respectful discussion. And I look forward to the next season. Hello over to you. This is Carol in Nevada in the U.S. From the time it started, about three months before the 2020 U.S. election, I was hooked. They have such a refreshing way of presenting information. We'll be hearing from a Republican voice later, but first to look back on the first three months with us is Beto O'Rourke, the former Democratic congressman from El Paso, Texas. It's just been so enlightening to hear the points of view and the, the people that are experts and the questions that get asked. I particularly love the banter between Carlos and Caddy at the end of the program I hope and look forward to future programs with them together. And we will be back late in the summer to talk about it all. We will. We will. As Nixon once famously said, tan, rested, and ready. <laughs> I love that. I'm hoping yeah. so. And if you'd like to tell us about anything you hear on the BBC World Service, please do get in touch. Email over to you at bbc.co.uk or you can tweet at over to you BBC. And with that, it's time to say goodbye. I'm Rajan Datar, the producer is Howard Shannon, and we'll be back with more of your feedback at the same time next week. Bye.